Like at one point we went to the bathroom just to go to the toilet for a cigarette. I tripped over Beyonce's dress and then landed on Donatella. Oh like my God. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we're working with you know. here, kids. Um, hi everyone and welcome to The Look with me, John Bonnet Blonde and Sink to Pink. I'm creating five looks to create a capsule collection within Fashion Week. Girl, please welcome Mahatma Candy. I'm so excited about this project. Y'all don't know, but me and this bitch, we know fashion, okay? Sometimes we are the ones wearing the jewelry. Sometimes we're the ones being <laughs> having the jewelry thrown at us. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. How is your creativity and your like mind being in, in lockdown, babe? I'm writing more, which is something very different for me. Um, so I'm writing things down, like listing things I want to achieve so that as soon as we're out of this lockdown, I'm going to go ham on the scene. <laughs> but, um, ah, but get I'm ready. Just, I'm, it's giving me the opportunity to look at myself and look at how I perform. I think we both share that specific love for fashion and styling. And I think that's another thing to say to a lot of drag queens out there. Like, love you guys and you're great performers and you're great you know, people in our community. I think there's a sense of style that gets lost sometimes. We've all got the bodysuit that we're all gonna buy. We all yeah. got the, you know, the pair of gloves that we all see on Wish and then we get it. <gasps> so it's quite, it's, quite, it's quite nice to like see stuff that is yeah. for yourself, that is like about you. In the first instance, someone looks at you as a drag queen, you can kind of tell a story. What would be three, um, three words you would use to describe your style, babe? Rich aunt energy. <laughs> oh my god, I totally get that. Everyone kept on saying, uh, the auntie that brings the potato salad. And I was like, oh my god, that became like, I, I thought I was the only one who was saying it, but everyone was saying it. How about and you? then my best friend, my best friend was like, you know what, you're not really that auntie anymore because you've like upped your game fashion wise. Oh my god. And you kind of, and you're kind of like the auntie, like the all knowing auntie that comes to the, comes to the reunions and like gives like the queers like oh okay like you know she's like she's the, she's the bougie auntie that's kind of like oh yeah, yeah 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 that's dior that's dior did you make the look that you're wearing the look? <laughs> it's a kimono it, it's stunning and and me and my mom made it i think me and my mom are like any french atelier where <gasps> everything's going well for like a couple of days and then it doesn't go well and then it does go well like you know we're just like all over things. each other she's she's so wonderful because she's she's got such a great brain because she's the kind of woman that i you know like she's she's a goddess in my book what has been one of your favorite looks that you've ever done babe well actually it was it was forcing the pink it was i think Oh, the um, the opening of the um, the Greenwich Peninsula. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And I went wild, and I was like so excited, like, oh my god, like, what are we gonna make? What are we gonna make? And I was so inspired by um, Mark Jacobs' collection. So me and my mom got together, and we made this like, because it was supposed to be inspired by water, right? And so we made this like, it was like some sort of weird jellyfish kind of like floating thing. Probably the the most couture that I've got in my wardrobe. So I've designed obviously four looks for you for this. Yeah. We're gonna look at yeah. it in a bit. I'm just gonna before I introduce our, our guest mentor for us, one of the pinnacles of London Fashion Week, please welcome Henry Holland. Hiya! Hi 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 I didn't get the um, monochrome memo. I should I should I change. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. No, you really missed it, Ben. Yeah. Do you remember it, Henry? Like like about probably really about twelve like about twelve years ago. Like whenever Johnny and like Jeanette yeah. and everybody was first boombox time, around boombox time, like when, yeah. when it sort of all really kicked off, there really only was like seven, eight like ten but ten, ten to fifteen drag queens. Uh, yeah. And I knew all of them, and it was great because I could get in anywhere. And now, <laughs> there, it's just, I don't even, I can't even keep up. I don't even know them. They're not even, no, I'm kidding. Before anybody really was doing a lot of brand partnership deals, babe, I think you really were at the forefront of it all. Did mm. it, was that, was that a conscious decision for you? I think it's partly just because I'm a Northern Pike and I'm just like, if someone's going to give me some money to do something that's going to help me create what I want to create. Right. I I didn't have that inbuilt elitist snobbery that I think so many people when they come into this industry feel like they should have. Yeah. So I I came into the industry very much like not by accident. I worked really hard, but I didn't study fashion, you know, I studied journalism and I came into the industry very much as a kind of welcomed 
kind of you know have a go harry type yeah of thing. yeah yeah and so and so when people wanted to work with me i was just so flattered whether it was hide baked beans or like jurex i was like babe you want to work with me let's do this whenever you whenever you saw because i remember what like like being it was still whenever i lived in northern ireland and watching you and alexa and mm. um do was it frock me was it that was the fro- was yeah. that, was frock me yeah. was the first one that was the first yeah. one. you know what there's not enough programs like that now i feel no do you know what's really difficult? And they've tried so many times in so many different ways. They've tried to put fashion on telly. Yeah. And it's so hard to make it work. And I think the best way that that's happened is Drag Race because it's yeah. got a different, it's got a different view on it and it's got a different spin and it's got that like individuality. It's got that sense of creativity and mm-hmm. it's got, you know, there's ref, like sitting and watching Drag Race last week and they were referencing like, um, you know, Iris Art, like Asa Arfan and Mark Jacobs. And, you know, the queens are referencing their references in yeah. their interviews and the names that they were talking about. And because you put it into this context of a, a competition of mm-hmm. drag queens and people can really relate to that. But when you try and talk to people about high fashion on TV, the thing with television is it has to appeal to the masses. Yeah, and so whenever you try to talk about fashion on television, they need it to be a makeover show, right? Or they need it to be like an accessible price point, and that makes perfect sense to me. You know, I understand it, I get mm-hmm. it, but it just makes it really difficult to do fashion on telly. Yeah. Whenever you were, whenever you were like starting your um, starting your brand, was there, or mm-hmm. just in general, love? Was there anybody that you had or looked up to as a mentor? I kind of came to the industry as this sort of wannabe, you know, kind of have a go, Harry, and the industry embraced me. And I found that warmth and embrace from nightlife. I found it on the dance floor in Boombox, and I found it at the cock, and I found it at Nag Nag Nag, and I found, you know, I found it at the ghetto. I found it in these incredible (laughs) venues that are no longer here, and that really, you know, makes me sad, but uh, that was where I was able to get my acceptance from mm-hmm. that that world of fashion that I was I was working at Smash It and like you know oh, the only Smash fashion, it? oh my god the, the only fashion I was like able to get my hands on as a stylist was Pop Shop and Jane Norman right <laughs> so the place that yeah, I yeah. got I, the place I found my you know my 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 family was from Nightlife and it was yeah. so important to me and it was you know, and incredible designers and stylists and big, big names that I would have never dreamt of working with knew me from the dance floor and were like, oh, I'll do that, I'll do that, I'll yeah. have that. So there was like Stuart Beavers made my bags for my first show. Wow. Katie Hillier made my jewellery. So, you know, Stuart Beavers is now a creative director of Coach, was then at Mulberry. Katie yeah. Grand was really friendly, like Luella Bartley, like Giles Deacon, mm. Gareth Pugh, Richard Nichol, all of these other designers that were kind of really like like toiling away at their craft at that time really embraced what I was doing. You know, London goes in and out of fashion on a global fashion scale, yeah. you know, and it was like there was the Galliano and McQueen years where everyone looked to London. It was like, the, you know, the, the pinnacle of creativity. And then it went off a bit and it went to the other big guys. And then when I started out kind of 2006, 2007, that everyone was starting to look back because mm-hmm. of like Christopher Kane and yeah. Erdem were coming out and Jonathan Saunders and Richard Nickel were like really creating this amazing like buzz around London and mm-hmm. I somehow managed to get myself in on that game yeah. because you know I was dancing on the dance floor with all of them. Support is important and like yeah you know, and sharing experiences and sharing people's thoughts and feelings. Yeah. The whole point of my business when I started it was about creating t-shirts that were like football shirts for fashion industry. So it was like, I wanted people to wear them with pride and uplift yeah. and support those designer names without having to spend a thousand pounds on the dress. You know, like mm-hmm. I wanted people to know who Christopher Kane was because he was doing amazing things. Yeah. But you could do that by buying an American apparel t-shirt off me that had his name printed on it for 50 quid yeah and that and that worked and because that wasn't a preconceived kind of idea it resonated because it was authentic but it perpetuated itself into um nowadays fashion every designer is putting their fucking name on everything you know like yeah. and want people yeah. to know 
who they fucking are. So like you yeah. were definitely a pioneer of that. I mean, obviously people were doing it like, you know, uh, you know, yeah. the big brands were doing like, you know, Fendi and Louis Vuitton were doing all their prints and stuff, but to put yeah. your, your name in bold letters as a statement for, yeah. you know, couture fashion, like and that's like something that we do now. supporting others, like, yeah. if I, like Ricardo is using Donatella in his campaign, you know? Right. Like, exactly, yeah, yeah. We, we, we should be working together and we yeah, should be uplifting and supporting each other. And it's a small community still as well. People think it's a, yeah. a large, it's, it's quite a small community, really. Like in terms of logistics, the reason why we were all friendly and the reason why we were all pally is because there was one cool club in London that we all yeah. went to every Sunday. Yeah. There was like every week we'd probably go to like three fashion parties that our PR told us we have to go to. We right. were all there at the same time. And then we'd be like, after party back at yours? Yeah, fine. Let's yeah. Go. <laughs> like, it, we were thrown together in this kind of crazy situation. And then every now and again, you'd get these weird moments where you'd be like, you'd all be flown to New York for the Met Ball and the familiar faces are yeah. your mates from Boombox and you'd be like, oh my God, save me. This is fucking weird. Like, I, <laughs> you know, I, I just stood on looking Beyonce's dress. Like, talk to me. Like, what's going to yeah, happen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what was the experience of being at Met Ball? So I wasn't even the, the big draw. Like, I was in a car with Aggie and she was like this big deal at the time. So I was, you know, the, the pressure wasn't necessarily on me so much, but... We were in a car and she's smoking out the window with elbow length gloves being like, fucking <laughs> hell, this is a nightmare. And we're, we're, we're approached, and you know, one by one, the cars pull up. So, so you're pulling up one by one and a block away, you can hear the shouts of the paparazzi. Wow. So you're in, you're in your car and you can hear them screaming and shouting and you're like, oh my God, is that, is, is that what I think it is? Is that what we've got to do? So like we get there and then they're like, ah, this, 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 this. and like, it was just at the pinnacle of a moment for being yeah, of like there. celebrity, like, wasn't it? Because it was early two thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it and it just was crazy. And it was like, as I said, they were all they were they were all saying Aggie's name. No one knew who I was, but it was just this like petrifying moment. And like this staircase is huge, and every time you kind of like look a different way, you bump into someone, and you're like, oh my god, it's Kirsten Dunst. Oh my god, it's the Olsons. Oh my god, it's Julia yeah. Roberts. Oh my god, it's, <laughs> and like. There is there isn't a person in the room that isn't an A lister. Henry, whenever you whenever like talking about fabrics and stuff, whenever you how is it whenever you whenever you were in your collections, would you always would it be fabric first, then design, or design then fabric? So if if it was a print, which a lot of the time we worked with our own custom print. So if it was a print, we would develop the print in line with the narrative of the collection. Right. And then we would translate the print onto different fabric bases, depending on what it needed to do. So if we were to say, do like, so we did one collection, for example, that was tartan. So yes. uh, the actual tailoring, we had woven in Scotland and it was Harris Tween. It was all very like authentic wow. and traditional. Yeah. But then we, but then we scanned it and we digitally printed it onto wow. silk. Oh, wow. And so then we could create pieces that had drapery and yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. And kind I of remember that collection. Movement. Shall we have a little look at some sketches that I've done? Um, no, I, I, with Mahatma, I really wanted, like, we spoke slightly before. Everything yeah. I really felt, felt like should be very short. She's a short, she legs. loves a short moment. Like it's legs. But with like, those legs, those legs are uh, worth uh, showing off. She lo- I mean, uh, she loves- They're wooden, they're not real. Person. Oh, that's fine, bud. <laughs> yeah. So this one you're is- gonna have to give me, You're gonna have to give me the name of your carpenter later, bud. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Welcome to me and Q, hon, two for one. <laughs> <laughs> so the 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 right starting from right this one is sort of like it's a bit it's a bit like a, a take on a jackie o sort of like 60s like like yeah. structured collar around but then with like I, like a renaissance almost i want to say clown but not clown sleeve a blue song yeah. sleeve but a then with a structured cuff a balloon sleeve yeah. a balloon <laughs> sleeve uh-huh. so this would be <laughs> like a, a satin or like with an overlay of a net i think i've seen something yeah. you know like where you can get a net where there's pearls attached or like a pearlette not a real mm. pearl thing. yeah so let's take a t- um let's take a tip from girls aloud or a little mix or all those girls so whenever they're on stage they wear a nude tight and then they wear a nude fishnet over the top because it uh-huh. disguises any lumps or bumps oh my god so if you wear that is it I do that all the time. I literally, yeah. I yeah. never used yeah. to can do we, it. It's we... only been in the past like two years that I've done it. 
So Can I just say making... really quickly, Henry, that was yeah. taken from drag queens. That was not of taken from Girls Aloud. <laughs> okay. And like, okay. no offense to Girls Aloud and Lil Mix, but drag queens have been doing that for centuries. <laughs> yeah. Um, but so using that theory, mm. anything made of satin with an overlay of a mesh will help disguise any kind of creasing or any movement. Right. So if, this, oh. if, these are, if these are performance looks, like you don't want creases around the hip, you don't right. want yeah, creases yeah, yeah. around the armpit. From second from left, so a full circle dress. So like when yeah. you're spinning around, there's a lot of movement. And then yeah. also with an arm, the arm would also have a lot of volume with an exaggerated collar, um, or sorry, okay. cuff that is a circular cuff. So almost like a very Renaissance sort of cuff, yeah. you know what I mean? So that circle skirt and a drapery fabric is so hard to get a flat line. Yeah, really? You're, you're, you're cutting it in a circle, and if you cut it in a silk, like it drops at different points, because if you're cutting it in a circle, it drops from the bias. Right, so yeah. your your hem kind of can tend to go a bit like this. Goodly do bottom. I always used to pretend was like intentional because it comes from It's a good thing to know. So if you were going to do a circular skirt and the pattern piece, make sure it's a fabric that does not stretch. And then it's third- It's not a reveal if you wear it all out on show when you come out, babe. Oh, mine's always out. <laughs> like, my, my shirt is so short. When I sit down, it is basic instinct. It is like, it's basic, basic intention. I the think it's a cruel cool intention. From, from the third <laughs> one, from the, What? Yeah, basic, inten basic <laughs> intention for you, babes. Cruel intention for us. <laughs> Third from third from right, it is sort of a take on this. Whereas yeah. the, the the front is so it would be a, a high. What do you call that? I just say high low, but a skirt that's longer at the back. Party yeah, that goes up at the side. Business at the back. Uh, yeah, like. A, and a this would be a bit. Do you know what this is? It's kind of la croix. It's kind of la croix. Okay. Like okay, and then is the skirt made of a tulle, so it's got loads of volume. The the waistline would be high. And then, yeah. the, and then it would be almost like a circular skirt sewn on, so it falls yeah. over the net, uh, so it poofs. Yeah. And then, last but not least, fourth from uh, fourth from right. This is. Do you remember? You know when Carrie's in Paris, that Oscar de yes. la Renta dress. Uh, Oscar it, de la Renta, it, yeah. It's basically that, but then with the the fabric, so it would be quite form fitted. Obviously, we could add a sleeve or not. Okay, so if we were to number them. Yeah. So from left to right, so left, which is the carry in Paris. Yeah. Yeah, is number one. Got it. Big sleeve with the bow is number two. Renaissance sleeve is number three. High neck is number four. Check yeah? it out. Okay. So, Mahatma, after three, say one, two, three, or four, which is your favorite? And I will do the same. Are you ready? Okay. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> One, two, three, two. Oh, what? Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if it was after. Or <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> One, two, three, two. One. <laughs> oh, what did she tell you? Okay. Well, do you know what though? Because they're kind of similar styles, we can work mm. with pieces of taking pieces from another. Definitely. Nothing, nothing's finished until the Nothing is finished, literally, 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 nothing is finished. <laughs> Hi. You Hi. Ready? Those sleeves are great. The sleeves are good, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's I'd like, so obviously without it fitting, there was meant to be that sort of like Balenciaga, like pleats at the front and then it goes down at the back. Uh, but obviously yeah. without it fitting, knowing where these pleats are going to go is not, because we can't see it for length, but it scoops down. Oh yeah. So yeah, when yeah, it yeah. sits, there was meant to be pleats in the front, and then it like sits with like that's like a little capelet that sort of forms like a little capelet at the back. Oh, oh yeah, and that that will move amazingly will on stage. Breeze a wind, honey. Uh, <laughs> catch your own wind. <laughs> I'm just to say that. Do you feel incredible? Do you feel Do safe feel in it? I feel safe yeah. in it, definitely. Do you I, I feel think safe <laughs> performing in it, or are you going to be showing us uh, your talk at any point or any issues? Uh... <laughs> are you going to do a TED well, talk? Well, what's it called? 
the one thing the one thing I really like about it is that it's really comfortable. You know, and like what's it called? It's yeah. one of the, and it's like one of the main things that we don't get to do in track is be comfortable. Um, and it's perfect. You it's can so perform. Kept. You can perform after a Mackey D's, babe. There's no worries <laughs> about perform, shit. I can perform while eating a Mackey D's, like literally <laughs> on stage, that, burger that in mouth. Skills. Well, yeah. thank you so much, babe, for your time and for your. No mental. worries. Thank you so much for putting your faces on for me at lunch, honey. Thank you. <laughs> Just thank you. <laughs> Henry, love you. Thank you for today. Babe, um, mm. Bye, lots of love. Bye. Thank you. Bye.